Next on BYUSN, let's play the midseason match game. How do BYU football's first six games this year match up with the first six games last year? Are the Cougars behind, on, or ahead of schedule? We'll break it down coming up on BYU Sports Nation. It depends on what standard you're holding them to, Spence. Hey, we're live. BYU Sports Nation presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, October 12th. I am Spencer Linton alongside chocolate donut activist Jerem Jordan. Now, we've asked for and wanted chocolate cougar tails. Cougar tails maple because Cosmo is a cougar and tan. That makes sense, right? But chocolate is just a really good donut. So is maple. But uh, there will be chocolate donuts uh, in the form of cougar tails coming up Saturday against Arkansas. Limited time. It sounds like it's only this game. I would love for this to be a more regular thing, Spence. I know Dave McCann loves the chocolate donut. Is, it's going to be awesome. And, in fact, yesterday we were at the homecoming opening ceremonies after the show, and we actually threw up this graphic about more flavors that we would like to see as well. We think there's more out there, including mint chocolate chip. Pumpkin would be... Uh, the reason for the season, right? Orange roll, aggressive. We don't need lemon per se, but... Blueberry? There are options here, Spence, uh, that could be found. Chocolate is the first one. We hope it's the tip of the iceberg. I'm okay with chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Maybe a cookies and cream. Okay, fine, cinnamon sugar. Okay, most of them are good. <laughs> most of them which are really one, good. Which one's not? I'm kind of weirded out by the orange roll one. I, that just doesn't, the orange sound, roll doesn't one? sound good to me. Lemon, probably not. No, no. Vanilla. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Unless you call it pumpkin, Lavelle's vanilla, and then it's great. Pumpkin. I know it's October, but I don't think pumpkin belongs on that cougar tail donut. But the, but the mm, majority? Okay. Are pretty, you a purist? Good. Are you? <laughs> who, I, I want to know on a poll on social, is a cougar tail meant to be maple only? <laughs> we can do that right now. Yes, we can. Let's do it right now. Okay, coming up on today's show, Caden Haas, uh, the BYU player from Arkansas, grew up rooting for the Razorbacks. Spencer's one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, with him. Our completely unbiased Big 12 plus four power rankings. I have massive issues with the list that we are going to put out. I'll tell you why. The newest Deep Blue features Andrew Mickelson, who now punches people in the face after being a kicker for BYU. He's in the MMA. Let's go. And are there open tryouts for kicker? And our newest uniform idea, it's not just cougar tails we're thinking about. We, since custom is an option, we've got ideas. But first, today's headline. Yes, let's customize those as well. BYU football continues preparation for Saturday's showdown with Arkansas. Razorbacks head coach Sam Pittman impressed with what he sees from BYU quarterback Jaron Hall and the Cougars. We can't, you know, we're going to have to pressure him because... Uh, I believe he'll he'll pick us apart if we don't. We want, we got to stop the run, and then uh, we've got to pressure him because uh, if we don't, I, I think he's really good and a really accurate thrower. And, and his receivers are big. You know, they're six two and better. BYU will be without linebackers Josh Larson and Tavita Gagne, both out for the season as announced by defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki yesterday. Defensive lineman Blake Mangelson still a week, maybe two weeks away from returning as well. His teammate on the defensive line, Gabe Summers, has a PCL injury and is questionable depending on pain tolerance. So you are a little banged up for sure in that front seven on the defensive side. A sellout crowd at Lavelle Edwards Stadium is expected and has been announced. Yeah. And all fans are asked to wear white. Sam Pittman just told us he's going to blitz Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall told us in fall camp when we asked him, what do you like more, a drop eight or a blitz? And he said a blitz. I like it. Chuck it. Let's go. They're one of the worst pass defenses in the country. Taysom Hill is the NFC Offensive Player of the Week after his incredible performance versus my Seahawks. In fact, he's done uh, something with his career up to this point that is incredible, which is our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. This is wild. Two players in the Super Bowl era, Spence, have at least 20 rushing touchdowns, eight passing touchdowns, and six touchdown catches. Taysom Hill and Walter Payton. Uh, yeah, the other guy is Sweetness, a Hall of Famer. If you're listening, whoa, 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 that's what I say. Sunday Night Football on NBC tweeting that out. That's incredible, man. That is unbelievable. He's one of a kind. Literally. <laughs> one of a kind. The Arizona Cardinals, as we stay with our NFL headlines, 
have signed free agent running back former BYU man Tyson Williams, who had previously played for the Ravens and Colts. That reported by Aaron Wilson of Pro Football Network. Olivia Wade made the top tour soccer team of the week after a goal in each game last week for the Cougs. Ashley Hatch played the entire second half for the United States women's national team in a bit of a shocking 2-0 loss to Spain yesterday. This marks the first time the United States senior women's national team has lost consecutive matches in five years. Yeah, they lost to England in Wembley over the weekend as well. Men's golf shot 9 under in the final round of the Wolfpack Classic in Reno. It's finished third. The biggest little city in America. Sophomore Tyson, uh, I was going to say Tyson Shelley. <laughs> Tyson Shelley shot a career low six under 66. Woo! Four Cougars finished in the top 20 for the first time this season. How about women's golf? They post an eight over par as a team. 296 their score in the final round of the Dale McNamara Invitational to finish tied for seventh place. Alicia May Mateo, the low finisher for the Cougars for the third straight event. She finished tied for 16th in the individual competition at five over par. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending, presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. At the midway point of the 2022 BYU college football season, Let's play the midway match game, Jerem. And literally midway between games six and seven, and it's Wednesday. Yes, so indeed. So this is the spot. It does not get more middle than this. But we decided not to, you know, just look at last year versus BYU through six games this year. We literally went back to the six games into last season point yes. and six games this year to get a real feel of how close this team is, statistically speaking, to last year's team, which was five and one through six games. So with that in mind, and we'll look at these numbers, Jeremy, is BYU ahead of schedule? Are they on schedule? Or are they behind schedule this season? It all depends what standard you're holding BYU to. And we're thinking about probably, at least for me, the preseason expectations for this team to the end and where we're at in uh, conjunction with that. At 4-2, and two, BYU is completely on schedule yes. with the record I expected through six games. Um, and on the back end, we're hoping BYU goes 5-1 and one and finishes the regular season 9-3 and three with a chance at 10. That's the hope. A 10-2 and two regular season was the high end. Probably 8-4 and four in the regular season was the low end, that three-game variance. But it's the means, the way BYU is playing, how it's happening, Spencer, that is behind schedule a bit. I thought, and I think you agree, that given how experienced this BYU team is, and I would dare say because of COVID, they are probably the most experienced team in BYU history, that they would be ahead of schedule here, that they would have been 5-1 and one and playing really well. There's a couple of things that stick out as to why. Tyler Algier's not here. The run game's not been consistent. This has made it so it's tough for BYU. I don't know on defense what the difference is. David Nixon said, BYU's uh, not in the right fits, meaning the right spots. Like, why is that? It's a lot of the same guys from last year. I'm confused as to why the big difference defensively. But let's look at a couple of numbers uh, and things that stick out. There have been a lot more injuries this year than last year. In fact, let's run through a list of notable kooks who have missed at least one game so I far. I hate this, this so much. I do too, and this is part of the story. Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, Tyler Batty, Chase Roberts, Miles Davis, Chaz Ayu hasn't played yet. Dallin Holker, Malik Moore, Caleb Hayes, Max Tuli, Atu Naisamahe, Earl Tuyoti Mariner, Austin Riggs, Gabe Summers. Like, this is a big deal. And when you don't have some of your best guys out there consistently, that's tough. You still do have Jaron Hall and Chris Brooks, although he's been banged up himself a little bit. And, but, like, your best playmaker, not named Jaron Hall, has been out for multiple games in Buka Nakua. And he's only targeted a couple of times against Notre Dame. These are issues, Spence. Let's also look at a couple of numbers. Is the offense way behind last year? The numbers say otherwise, it's which weird. is crazy. It's kind of weird. Yards per carry, yards per attempt, points per play. BYU is better, better than last year. Look at that, points per game. Better than last What? I will add this caveat. The South Florida game has skewed everything. 51 points in that opener, and BYU ran for over 300 yards alone in that game. Which feels 34% like... of all the rushing yards, by the way. <laughs> so in one game out of six, BYU puts together 34% of the season's rush yards. So that game has kind of bloated that statistic. But you always play a team that you should beat up in the first six. Last year, it should have been South Florida and, say, Utah State. BYU ran for two 
hundred plus, whatnot. So you're always going to have kind of that game. Yeah, sure. Right? Utah State was eleven and two last year and won the Mountain West. They were way better. So maybe BYU should have. But thought, South Florida stunk last year. Yes. Yeah. For, and they fair stunk enough. This year. We thought maybe with Utah State down this year, coming into Provo, that BYU should have beaten up on the Aggies. They more, did not. And they should have beaten up on Wyoming, who was a middling Mountain West Conference team. But again, to your point, the means. The me- BYU just does not well. look sharp. They yes. don't look sharp. Yes. They look like a talented team that's just kind of like coasting a little bit, right? They, they just kind of defensively not getting off the field. It it affects the offense. BYU's not crisp in certain areas. And I'm not talking like because Kalani Satake Spence is is he has too much sportsmanship to me. Like he's too nice. He's a great dude. We all love Kalani. He's awesome. But at the end of games, I don't want to kneel down until it's like under two minutes. If it's after, I want you scoring a touchdown. Like, keep going. But BYU empties the bench. They want experience for these guys. I understand why they do it. <laughs> I would just be a little more aggressive. Obviously, he's paid the big bucks. I am not. I am paid bucks. Uh, hashtag Brigham. But, like, okay, defensively, BYU is worse than last year. And this is pretty obvious, right? This, does, this doesn't surprise us. 0.7 yards more per carry. Um, you know, yards per attempt is, is uh, about the same defensively. Points per play increased uh points per game increased by six points yeah, is giving up almost 27 tough. points a game through six this year and again that 24 mark is interesting by the way arkansas has allowed 24 plus in five of the six okay there's an opportunity there yeah absolutely uh, we've noted their offense or sorry their defense has been generous to recent opponents Granted, and tough those schedule. opponents have been Texas A&M, Alabama, yes. and Mississippi State most and, recently. And Cincy and South Carolina are no slouch. Cincy's good. South Carolina's okay. Missouri State's top five FCS team. Missouri so, State did put so. up a lot of points on Arkansas. Yes, they put up in 27. Which was kind of weird. So, so can get, BYU go 30-plus at home? Opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. Is Arkansas beat up enough that they're limping into Provo and BYU can take advantage of the scenario? You would hope. We're all kind of hoping that BYU does that and can get to 5-2. and two. Uh, now, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair by saying BYU's coasting. Maybe that's not the right word. I just feel like they looked, they look sloppy. They look sloppy and sloppy. undisciplined. Yeah, they're better than what we have seen on the field. We believe this. Yes, they, they are a better team, capable of more. They can be sharp. They can be disciplined, and that's probably why when you listen to Kalani Satake in his press conference this week, he sounds so frustrated. He's like, "Yeah, low hanging fruit. We just we have to fix mistakes that are easy to fix." We didn't think that Coach Otaki would be talking about fixing easy mistakes with this experience he of said a team. Stupid mistakes. Yeah, yes. that, is, that is a very opinionated word to use. For sure. Yeah. How much of that is on the fact that BYU is injured and they have to play a number of guys that maybe we didn't expect to see the field? The but fact that Tavita Gagne is in the red zone on defense against, you know, Michael Mayer, the All American tight end for Notre Dame, I was like, what, what What's happening? This Where's Max Tooley? This, Where are all these guys? No offense to Tavita, but most guys, it's like, okay, BYU needs its best guys in that situation or its best scheme, They're right? They're just thrown the, into these very, very intense, dramatic situations. Yes. It's like BYU was playing zone in that moment, specifically on that touchdown, da, da, da. But, yes, the, this this team, we, we're not at an apathy point, Spence, where we go, ah, it's just not good enough and it stinks. No, BYU is better than this, and when they don't perform well yes. enough, uh, it's disappointing. Last year, BYU showed so well. Was the Pac-12 so bad that's the difference? I don't necessarily believe that, although we like to make fun of that because it's BYU and Utah. But last year, did, like, is Tyler Algier the biggest difference for yes. the defense? And where BYU's moving the chain? In my opinion, scoring yes. Scoring on because offense, he, he time was, of possession. He was the guy that was – think about the Washington State game or the end of games against Utah and Arizona State. They could not stop Tyler Algier – on third and three, third and four, sometimes third and five, from continuing to move the chains. Like, BYU would just grind out the clock. They win by nine. They couldn't, they couldn't keep BYU's offense off the field because they had a bruiser and a special running back in Tyler Algier. So, yeah, I think that's a huge part of where BYU has not been able to maintain drives and stay ahead of the chains and be good on as good in first down as they want to be. Keep the defense off the field yes. for a few more Tyler, minutes. Like the impact of losing Tyler Algier has been more intense than I thought it was going to be. It's been it's been more obvious than what I initially speculated yeah. because you know Christopher Brooks is a really good running back. Tyler Algier 
is starting for the Atlanta Falcons right it, now. It was a season record in rush yards and touch. Like, it was – well, not touchdowns. Luke had more than one. He's an all-timer. But that was – yeah, that was an all-time season. Time possession is a big deal. Now, if you're scoring quickly, that, the, the, the only problem is your defense is going to get there, but you're scoring quickly. Um, right now, that's not as much the case because time possession could be overrated. It's not right now. BYU is minus 532. The defense is out there. And in the two games uh, where BYU lost, it got dominated in this space. In comes a team that loves time of possession and to run the ball. In fact, the number one SEC rushing team is Arkansas. They love to run it. Gregory Bell said on Coordinator's Corner, hey, you almost have to treat them like a service academy. And Elias Tuiaki said, we are considering doing that in terms of that type of offense, right? Yeah, they were chucking it down the field against Mississippi State. They got blown out, but they, they can throw it, okay? And K.J. Jefferson was out. But uh, they've got a good offense. And that is BYU's bane right now, uh, is the inability to get off the field. And in comes a team that can rush the ball well. Yet, can Jaron Hall, and that shoulder, hopefully he's all right. Obviously, he's, he wasn't the same Jaron Hall last week. Can he be the same Jaron Hall we've seen that has had better numbers this year, that is getting first-round buzz? He's got to show out in this game. Hopefully, that shoulder is good to go, man. We believe that BYU is a better football team than they have shown they are, specifically over the last five games. That's fair, right? They've got a game to prove it this Saturday as well. Yes, so just maybe, turning point. I love that somebody tweeted at me, and uh, I need to give due credit here if I can find the tweet, but the gist of the tweet was, hey, uh, BYU is a second-half team. BYU opens up the second half of the season on Saturday. Yes, so they do. That's a great <laughs> point. Second-half team meaning, hey, go 6-0 and down the stretch, and you get 10 uh, wins. Go 5-1, and one, it's you at, win 9. Our guy at 33 Gregorio is the one who, there you go. who tweeted that. There yeah, you go. it just occurred to me. BYU's been a second-half team so far. Second half of the season starts on Saturday. The hope now is you go 5-1 and one in the back six. But if you lose to Arkansas, you're staring at 8-4 and because you got at Liberty, at Boise State, at Stanford. Yeah, and I just hate that. Doubt creeps in at that point. You've lost back-to-back -back yes. games, four and three, haven't been playing well One now and three for the six big consecutive four. games. Yeah. This is a huge turning huge point game. game for BYU. Huge game. Like, it would be a great time to put together the best performance of the season. <laughs> I cannot emphasize that enough. It'd be, now it's, the, yeah, the guys now have been time. called out. Do it for the chocolate cougar tails. The guys, the guys have been called out. Yeah, Let's effort, go. effort is there. Can they fix the mistakes and not – and not be as sloppy as they have been. Huge, huge game. Let's hear from you and Voice of the Nation as we discuss our question of the day. Is BYU football on, ahead, or behind schedule as it pertains to the 2022 season? At J underscore Royal 09 on Twitter answers, 4-2 and two is where I expected BYU to be at this point, but the level of play is way behind schedule. I'd be okay if the losses were competitive or if BYU had been playing well, but they haven't been plain and simple. BYU's only play, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only one game. I'm fine with that. Where BYU was not super competitive at Oregon. BYU You're going to have one a year. BYU's still competitive against Notre Dame. In fact, in yeah. spite of yeah. everything that went wrong on Saturday, they had the ball down five with all the momentum. Like, that, that's why BYU, it's frustrating. BYU made it competitive because they got a, uh, an interception inside what? Was it the red zone or the 25 by Max Tooley? And the fourth down stop. BYU made that game competitive. You always to be credited with that. Four and two. Moral victory. We think four and two right on schedule. On it's schedule. win-loss. Yes. It's the style of play. Yes. That needs a little bit of help. How matters. It really does. The end is the most, the thing that matters the most, but how matters. Okay, BYU football with Kalani Stock is on demand in case you missed last night. Or if you want to watch it again, Gregor Bell uh, and the coach Kalani Stock and Caden Haas recount the Notre Dame game, talk about Arkansas. Deep Blue on there as well, which is coming up later in this program. Hobbs Nyberg in the film room. You can check it out on BYUSN.com. Hey, speaking of Caden Haas, he's the Arkansas kid on the BYU roster. Up next, he discusses growing up as a Razorbacks fan, taking on Sam Pittman, the head coach. Went to those camps in Arkansas. And how BYU gets better up front to start quick. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. 
Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, blue, quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. From out in America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Telehealth. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing or anything. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they carry. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Station, live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jaron Jordan. BYU defensive lineman Caden Haas grew up in Arkansas as a Razorbacks fan, not surprisingly. <laughs> Went to a few Razorbacks camps when their current head coach, Sam Pittman, was the offensive line coach. But now, clearly Caden is all BYU and ready to take on the team he used to root for. One-on-one -on -one with BYU defensive lineman Caden Haas. Caden, it's always tough to come off of a loss uh, and reset your mind and be ready 100% in and uh, just because it, it stings and it hurts. So what what is your method of overcoming a loss to get your mind right the next week? Um, for me, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess for me, it's pretty simple. I don't really have to do too much. I after the game, I just have to watch the film before I go to bed. My body won't let me fall asleep until I do, um, just to see how, how I played, what mistakes I made. And then um, I watch it again on Monday with uh, just in our position groups. And after that, I'm good. I, um, I personally, I'm not really somebody that gets, you know, too high or too low. I, I play just pretty even keel the whole time. Um, and that's kind of my personality as well. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I have to do too much to get over a loss. Um, as long as I know the things I did wrong and can correct them, then then I'm pretty good usually. So, You sound a little bit like Jaron Hall. Are you the Jaron Hall of the BYU defensive line? Uh, I don't know about that. Jaron's uh, <laughs> got a lot on me. He's, Jaron's a great quarterback, great player, and uh, we love him. So, no, I, I don't know if I'd say that. But <laughs> <laughs> What did you see on the film? Uh, from yourself and from the team, uh, things that are obvious that you want to change right away to get better? Um, yeah, I think um, just a couple of things. I think, um, you know, we, we could have tackled a little bit better at the line of scrimmage. Um, there's a couple of long runs that got away from us. Um, you know, whether that was somebody filling a gap or just wrapping up better, you know, just fundamental stuff. Um, you know, we definitely wish we could have had a few of those back. But overall, I think that um, scheme wise, like we, you know, brought more pressure this week. And um, when we did, I think it helped, um, you know, because there's there's times to bring a little pressure. There's times to play coverage. And I think overall, just it left us with them, some things to build on, some things um, to improve. And, um, you know, just just good to build on for this week going into Arkansas. So how would you assess the attitude and atmosphere around BYU football halfway through the season with four wins and two losses coming off the loss to Notre Dame? 
I would say that, um, you know, we're, we're confident. We know we're a good team. I, I feel like we're kind of at a point where we, you know, we feel like we still have something to prove a little bit. Um, you know, like Kalani says, like we, we probably haven't played our best ball yet. And we're looking forward to that because, you know, we've, we've done some great things this season so far and, and that's not even at our best. So when we do get to that point, it'll be, um, you know, it'll be scary for whoever we're playing. So we're, we're just looking to keep building. Well, as you just said a few moments ago, it's Arkansas week. You are the Arkansas kid. It is your home state. What kind of emotions are you feeling as you go into a game where you host a team at Lavelle Edwards Stadium that in many ways you grew up rooting for? Yeah, I I think the only way to describe it is just I'm, I'm just excited. Um, excited to see family and friends that are coming out. Um, you know, excited to play against the Razorbacks at, you know, the, I think the state of Arkansas, you could, you could say almost worships the hogs a little bit at times. Um, so it's uh, no, just, just a great opportunity. Um, they, you know, they've got a great old line, great old line, you know, head coach and coach Pitt. Um, so no, we, we know they'll be well coached. We know they're um, a tough football team and uh, I'm, I'm just excited to excited for the opportunity. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You have, somewhat of a relationship with with Sam Pittman in Arkansas football, even into your high school years. Walk us through that story. Um, yeah, just, just a little bit. Um, he was the O-line coach at Arkansas just while I was being recruited. Um, so I went to a couple camps, um, just had a few conversations with him. Um, you know, he, he gained my respect really quick. He's, he's a great coach. Um, you know, he's a great players coach. Everybody there loves him. Um, but yeah, so we don't have too, too much of a relationship, but I, you know, met him a few times in high school, um, recruited me a little bit. So, but yeah, a lot of respect for them. Yeah. Here you are in some ways that it's coming full circle for you now at BYU. You mentioned they have a great offensive line. They clearly want to run the ball a lot. Do you prefer that in your position on the defensive line when a team wants to run the ball a lot? Um, I think there's some other guys that, that may disagree with me, but personally, yeah, I, <laughs> it, it makes things easier, a little bit easier for me. Um, just, you know, it, it allows me to not have to think about as much. So, um, you know, just kind of look, look at the uh, formation, just where everybody's at and, you know, just get an idea of where the play is going to go and, and just play. So yeah, it, I, I enjoy it. What type of, <clears throat> family conversations are you having as you lead up to this game um knowing that you're from arkansas and um the razorbacks are part of your family what are those conversations like um just uh i think just more excitement really i mean um you know like i think i've said a, a couple of times I, I have some friends that are still on the team um you know a lot of a lot of people come into the game um that'll, you know, may or may not root for me or for Arkansas. I, I, I don't know either way. Um, but it's just, no, I, everybody's just excited there, you know, a little bit of trash talking here and there. Um, but it's just, you know, I think college football has a way of uh, bringing people together. So I think that's, that's more what it is. What type of BYU team do you expect to show up on Saturday afternoon in front of a a white out, all fans are being told to wear in white. You, you've got the custom helmets. So what type of atmosphere and, and team is going to show up in front of that atmosphere? Um, I think the atmosphere will be, you know, pretty electric. Um, Lavelle Edwards has been, the stadium's been crazy so far this year. Um, you know, Cougar Nation always shows up for us. And I think that, you know, Cougar Nation can expect a, a BYU team with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Um, I think we're going to come out firing and, and the goal is to start fast and, and play some good football. So I think, I think it should be a good game for us. It's one thing to start fast when you're an offensive player, because it just seems kind of like those kind of go hand in hand. You have more control of that as a defensive player. How do you start fast? Yeah, I think, um, you know, everybody fly into the ball, maybe get a, a sack or TFL, on the first possession and go three and out. I think that's, you know, gets everybody going, keeps us fresh. Um, it brings a lot of momentum for the offense.
So I'd say that's how, you know, we could start fast as a defense. And how do you keep a really good quarterback in KJ Jefferson, guy who's known to fly around a little bit himself? How do you keep him at bay? What is the game plan to contain a guy like that? Yeah, we've, I mean, we've just got to play assignment sound football, um, you know, because he, um, you know, a great quarterback. Um, he's a big guy. He can run and he throws the ball pretty well, too. So it's, uh, everybody's just got to be able to do their job, um, you know, and individually uh, across the board as a defense. So I think if we, you know, can play some assignment sound ball, um, you know, have a few guys make some big plays, I think that uh, we'll be able to bottle them up a little bit. What would a win over Arkansas do for this BYU football team? I think that it just sets us in the right direction going forward for the rest of the season. Um, you know, because we going into the season, you know, we, we felt that we had the opportunity to go undefeated. Obviously that hasn't happened. We've lost two games, but you know, the, the expectation to win out is, is still there. And I think it just would, you know, give us the momentum in the, in the direction that we need to finish really strong. So. Okay. Caden, I need to ask you uh, before I let you go here, but what, how do you get adequately prepared for just any game? I know the Arkansas game has some added juice for sure, but what's your, what's your preparation on game day, whether music, food, like rituals, what do you do? Um, on game day? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty simple guy. Like as far as that stuff goes, I, um, you know, in an afternoon game, um, you know, I just can go to bed a little bit earlier. Um, you know, get up, have a good breakfast, watch maybe a little bit more film and, and that's about it. I, there's nothing that I really do as far as like, you know, traditions or like, as far as music goes, like I'm, you know, I just stay pretty calm, listen to just some, you know, good country music and okay, uh, that's, that's about it. So who's your country jam, man. Oof. Um, it's. Uh, either like Luke Combs, Cody Johnson, or Morgan Wallen. Those okay. three are, are pretty hot right now. Those, those are your guys. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, and one last bonus question. Uh, when I say <laughs> woo pig suey, <laughs> what emotions come to mind? How do you even, is that the proper way to say it? How do yeah. you do it? Oh, yeah, you, you got it. That's, that's just right. Um, no, it's, yeah, just brings back a lot of memories. Um, you know, going to Arkansas games as, as a kid and, um, you know, just being there with friends and family. Like I said, I, college football has a way of uh, yeah. bringing people together and just a lot of good memories here in uh, Whoop Pig Suey. So what does that even mean? Do we know what that means? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how they call oh, the hall. So. Matter of fact, I'm going to. I'm going to reach in my drawer. I think I still, I had an Ar a BYU Arkansas fan. Give me one of these things. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> a, yeah. It's a hog nose. There you I'm go. Sure, I don't know how I feel about it. I have mixed emotions. Should I burn this thing? Uh, like what, what, do I, what do I do with this? Do you want it? Hey, I'll leave it up to you. It's, it's in your court. <laughs> Caden, great to talk to you, man. Uh, ultra Whoa. stoked that you get to play against the hogs this week and looking forward to BYU starting fast against the Razorbacks. Yes, sir. Caden Haas on BYU Sports Station. We're launching a full-scale investigation into uh, the origination of Woo Pig Suey. So, well, hopefully. I don't even care about the origin. I just don't even know what it is, <laughs> which I was just reading about it during the interview. But, uh, yeah, we'll get into that later in the week. I, I love this tweet coming in from at Baden Davies 01, who said, uh, if we're thinking custom, why not custom for each player on the helmet? Exhibit Haas. And <laughs> look at this helmet. <laughs> he asked for Caden on a Razorback. It's Caden riding a Razorback on the Blue Hound. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That image on the helmet. Against Tex uh, Utah Tech, I think this is what it should be. <laughs> okay, after further review, it breaks down the film of BYU Notre Dame. Let's head to the Razorbacks. Woo Pig Suey. It's available on demand on BYUSN.com if you missed it last night. And did future Big 12 Conference friend and foe UCF just give BYU maybe the best idea ever for a custom uniform? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere.
And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at BYU.edu today. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists, is because of the fans. To have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive, I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. Make sure you follow BYU Sports Nation on the social medias, uh, like the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube, and the Twitter. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around, presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Earlier this week, Spencer Klenstake was asked if he was considering holding open trouts for a BYU kicking position. Are the Cougars to that point? No. Of course they're that, not. No, not to that point. Like Jake Oldroyd, believe it or not, is going to make an impact at some point later in the season. I, tr I, I truly goal. believe that he will make a field goal and it, he will have an impact on the season moving forward. Justin Just Smith opened the door by missing a PAT. I can't really like, blame Like, what? Uh, Shoot. BYU is better than that. Yes. Come on now. Cash Peterman's still there. Like, Cash yeah. Peterman's sitting there going, do I get a chance to? It's like, it's like an open tryout going to produce somebody better than those three? Just Come make, on, no. Just, no, just make field, make field goals and kids. A break in the Zingo, maybe? Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be awesome. BYU changed its lifting schedule this week to prepare for a 1.30 kick time, Jerem. You and I spent a lot of time talking about the little nuances, like, BYU's got to switch something up, they got to do something different. Will this make a difference in preparation for an afternoon game? Uh, BYU feels it will. That's why they did it. So I hope so. I hope it's the answer. Like engaging your body earlier in the day. I think that's sure. what I hope it's the answer. I hope it's the answer this week, and I hope it's the answer against Liberty, which is going to be a 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain kickoff as well in Lynchburg. Yep, that'll be a, another 1.30 Mountain body start, right? Here's to a simple yet majorly impactful change, we hope. Hopefully. According to Sports Media Watch, BYU has the highest amount of TV viewership through the first six weeks of any team in the new Big 12. Where does this rank on the celebration scale where one is a golf clap and five is hang a banner? Uh, this is probably a two for me on that scale, <laughs> Jerem, because of BYU and the hangover of losing to Notre Dame. You know, it's like, yeah, a lot of people watch BYU. This is not new to me. Like, this is, this is what we have come to expect. BYU is a national brand. Not BYU has State. great numbers. We have talked ad nauseum in moments, especially with BYU's impact on the Big 12 and the future contract here. Like, BYU gets viewership. And so, yeah, yeah. This is a two. I got one. Right, or just, one for you. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. That's great. Okay. Nice, it's cool. It's great. Nice, nice pot. It's great. It's a nod to BYU's brand. Yeah. BYU fans have been asked to wear white this week, not royal. White, not royal. It's a white out at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. They're asked every Sunday as well. <laughs> With that in mind, is the combo of white and chocolate cougar tails a bad idea? Yes. I think we're going to have a lot of stained shirts. So make sure you use Tide. Or See, whatever the official now that I think about it, detergent is of BYU. I love the chocolate cougar tail, but what if there was just like a drizzle of like white vanilla frosting on top of the already chocolate? Now we're place. getting custom. Okay, talk to Get Billy custom. Nixon. Let's go. Billy Nixon and BYU Dining should chat. All right, we have a poll question up there on social media. Is the yep. cougar tail meant to be maple only? 200 votes thus far. 55% of you say no. 44% are saying yes. It okay. should be only maple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. UCF is wearing its Space U unis this weekend to celebrate a tie-in with the Kennedy Space Center. Should BYU do a missionary-themed <laughs> uniform and finally embrace Gonzaga and San Diego State fans? No. <laughs> no. You've been called to serve in the end zone. No. 
No, I didn't think anything could be worse than the bibs. <laughs> I, I am surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible, but That's hilarious. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> With the name tag and everything. Oh, my goodness. That would be something. Okay. <laughs> the black pants and the white shirt. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so, it's so bad. bad. That is so bad. I didn't know what it looked like. It's so bad. <laughs> the Photoshop's great. It's just generally bad. Oh my goodness. Uh, Sporty McSports on Twitter pointed out that BYU has been in the top 44, Jerem, for 26. If you know, weeks. you know. Come on. Did we miss the biggest headline of the week here? Indeed. In fact, yeah, BYU is outside of that. I'm, they're only 40 now. Only 40 teams. <laughs> is any in team the in the Mountain West Conference in the top 44 right now? San Jose State got like a vote or Ooh, something. Ooh, the so Spartans. Congratulations. All right. Join Spencer and I as we don the missionary uniform oh. coming up. Oh, we're not? 3.30, uh, excuse me, 1.30 Eastern time. The game's at 3.30 Eastern. BYU Sports Nation game day, two-hour breakdown coming up Saturday afternoon. Our deep blue feature hits next, quite literally, featuring kicker turned MMA fighter Andrew Mickelson. Hashtag for the brand. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather and stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, Dally Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Dally Ford in Spanish Fork. BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. Long gone are the days of wimpy kickers, especially at BYU. Just ask former kicker, now turned MMA fighter, Andrew Mickelson. He is the center of our deep blue feature. So a common misconception about kickers is that they're the skinny, unathletic kid that can't contribute at a different position. In reality, kickers are people too. We can go out there and make some plays and, and have an impact on the game too. I grew up on a farm with nine siblings. Growing up in that environment, doing a lot of work with each other, bucking hay and chopping wood and cleaning horse stalls, we liked to fight. It started with the older sibling rivalry. Fighting was for recreation and also a way of, that we would handle disputes and then just kind of transition from there into sports. Of all the brothers, we definitely had kind of more of that taste for aggression and the, the thrill of combat. I wasn't as focused on fighting growing up. I was more focused on team sports and trying to take that to the next level. Any sport that he could do, he was doing. And he became really athletic. He would 
pick up on sports really quickly. He would learn skills quickly. He was always working out. He was really strong for his size and for his age. Can anybody get open for him? He'll roll right, let it go. Fight. The crowd goes wild and my family goes wild. People couldn't believe what they had just seen. And seeing how happy that made my whole family, seeing how excited they were that BYU just won in this exciting way, was the moment where I knew I wanted to be a part of that someday. Put in your book the Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. So freshman year, football's going well. I'm playing safety and I'm playing running back. I'm getting a lot of playing time, and I'm looking at the rest of my high school career, excited to go and make a name for myself, and, and then it all kind of comes to a halt. When Andrew got hit by the truck and suffered a lot of damage to his head, that really limited his options for sports. One day I'm out running with my brother. It's evening time, so it's low light, it's rainy, so visibility isn't ideal. I don't even look, I just meander across the street behind him, but not as quickly, and got hit by a truck. Andrew had always said from a young age that it was one of his goals to play on the BYU football team. And we all kind of wondered, well, how's that gonna happen? The brain surgeon said that you shouldn't play football. You shouldn't get any concussions and you should avoid any sport that causes a lot of impact to your head. The injuries I sustained from that was femur fracture and a cerebral hemorrhage, bad, bad brain impact and we kind of wondered what he was gonna do to accomplish that goal, and so he went to kicking, and he had no experience kicking, and he would just drive to local high schools, and he would just practice kicking the football for hours. I really struggled, was not good for the first while, actually. Couldn't even get it high enough to make it over the crossbar, and the heckling was brutal. But kicking was my only option at that point, and football was far and away my, my favorite sport. It was my passion at the time. And so despite the discouragement, I just kept at it. I went out there every day. The coaches at BYU said, hey, we like what we see. We'd love to bring you on. And so I went through the application process, sent in my transcripts. I had good grades. I thought that there, there shouldn't be any reason why I don't get accepted and then I got the uh, rejection letter. And so I couldn't stand being that close and letting a rejection letter derail my, my dreams and goals. So the head of admissions made a deal with me. He, he listened to what I had to say and he said, look, you come in and take a full course load in spring and summer semesters and you get a 4.0, we will reconsider you for admission. But that's all I got for you. That's the best I can do. And I just said, done. BYU was everything that I had dreamed it would be and more. My first ever kick for BYU was against University of Texas my freshman year, and I actually ran down and made the tackle. And then my last ever kick for BYU in our bowl game my senior year, I ran down there and made the tackle. So it was kind of funny bookends to a fun and long and successful career at BYU, and it just kind of is a funny segue into what I do now, which is hit people in the face. <laughs> I knew from fighting him in the street that he would be really good and invited him to come to our gym. And his first class here, which was jujitsu, he did really, really well. Literally after about two weeks, I was like, okay, this guy's got what it takes. Fast forward to now, I'm five fights into my fighting career. I'm four and one. I lost one via decision and it's, it's been everything I had hoped it would be and more. In the five fights that I have seen, he has continuously progressed. And not by a little bit, right, by a lot. So having success early on in a fight, like for instance, a 38 second knockout, right? A lot of people would say, oh man, and pat on the back and just go off and, and maybe enjoy the success from that. I think Andrew went, okay, hey, that was great, What's next? What should I do next to improve upon that? 
I originally took my first fight more as just checking an item off the bucket list. I wanted to take a sanctioned, legitimate MMA fight. But now having the success that I've had this early on, it's kind of grown more and my goals have kind of expanded more into taking this professionally. He has the potential to go really far with fighting. He's able to hang with professional fighters and he has the work ethic and the drive to definitely compete at a high professional level. You can't let a small injury, being tired, being sore, not having enough sleep, like that doesn't matter, everybody goes through that. But you have to be able to show up, be coachable, and continue to make it through that. And that's something that Andrew has, and it's incredible. He has the family, he has the job, and there's, there's a lot of balance, and that's gonna be the biggest challenge. But as long as you don't get it in your head, I'm professional now, I have to take it serious. You should have been taking it serious from the very start, which he did. Why set a goal if there's not gonna be some challenges along the way? That's what drive means to me. I wanna make sure that I'm setting lofty goals, things that I'm passionate about, things that I care about, but I also don't wanna let the roadblocks get in my way from actually climbing that mountain and achieving those goals. Andrew Mickelson, I'm so glad that he got on the Pat McAfee show. Yeah, that was for his, cool. For his efforts, and he's wearing the For the Brand yeah, gear. Yeah. Like, bring, make kickers great again, right? Yeah, and that was, that was one that's so fascinating, right? And we've had him on the show before, is the kickers have a sort of uh, perception, right? But no, this dude punches people dude. in the face now, and he's good at it. Like, <laughs> it's exciting to watch his career. Shout out to Canby, Oregon, by the way, which uh, my wife's grandpa is from as well, like... Uh, like Andrew, and it's it's a great spot. You can see Mount Hood, clear as day. It's beautiful. Solid. Okay, BYU soccer, big game with undefeated in top 25 Portland coming up Woo! on Saturday night, 9 Eastern time in the WCC. Portland has not been beaten this year. There were 15 pilots, plus how far did BYU football drop in our totally unbiased Big 12 plus four power ranking? I got issues here, bro. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content, all for free, on the BYU TV app. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good one. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Cody Epps, officially a dude. Make sure you download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps, and uh, you can subscribe and listen to the podcast as well. It is time for our totally unbiased Big 12 plus four power rankings. I got issues! 
with our list and issues in my life. Beginning on the top with number one ranked Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have absolutely earned it. Road win at Baylor. Jerem, Oklahoma State's the real deal. Followed by TCU, Kansas State. Kansas, in spite of losing Kansas to TCU way at home, overrated here. In spite of losing to, to TCU at home, number four, Texas number five, and there's BYU at number six. Okay. Uh, what, what are your issues? Okay, Cincinnati, Baylor at eight, Texas Tech, UCF, Iowa State. Houston. Now, I just want more data points in this. We didn't even mention Oklahoma. <laughs> Where is They're 13. They're 13. Oh, and then West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Yeesh. Um, yeah, Oklahoma. Okay. That's bad. Okay, I, I've looked at other metrics. Okay. They're, they're not everything. I'm not saying go for two with the Ravens here kind of deal. But it's just other data points, other uh, rankings. Texas is considered to be a top five team by most metrics, which feels crazy. So I would probably put them, honestly, at three. Because, yes, they lost at Texas Tech and they lost to Alabama. But, like, they just destroyed Oklahoma. Now, now, so here's the thing. Here, I'll, I'll give you the fact that, that Texas is better than them because Quinn Ewers is back. Yes, Their starting Quinn quarterback Ewers is back. He wasn't playing against those, Texas Tech. And got, injured, got injured in the injured Alabama against, game. They might be undefeated team. and ranked like fourth right now. They're a different team. Yeah. Like, But it's body of work up to the point. So yes. I might put Texas at four until they go and beat some other better team. I also think BYU is overrated in this a little bit. Like, BYU can play better, but we've got to Beat uh, Baylor head-to-head. Beat Baylor head-to-head, -head, which is a nice one. We don't okay. have time for me to explain all the metrics, okay? <laughs> we we got to go. <laughs> I'll right. explain it on so, on Twitter later. Oklahoma 13 out of 14. What? <laughs> Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX. Healthcare elevated. Answering, is BYU football on, ahead, or behind schedule at this yep. point of the season? Yep. At TX Colonel on Twitter says, on schedule, but missed a golden opportunity to be ahead. I see what you did. A golden opportunity against the Golden Domers. Mm. And they're 5-1. and one. Then they're absolutely ahead Rudy of schedule. Rudy was offside. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. This is a day of adaptation. you got to adapt or die. And the BYU <laughs> folks that make the Cougar Tales BYU dining. have adapted. BYU Dining has adapted. Concessions, yeah. yep. Absolutely. Uh, for a long time, this school didn't even have caffeine. Like, what? And then, I think, what, in 2017, we got the glorious revelation from on high. And people joked to be able to have four caffeine. nine because of the caffeine on campus. No, that's not a thing. Come on now. The BYU Dining, shut up. Oh, great stuff. Our thanks to today's guest, defensive <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to end the show hey, on a positive Situational note. awareness and obedience from BYU's defense will help them. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of time. Dude, this is so bad. How does Puka feel about this? as being the poster child for this. No choice. For Jeremy, I'm supposed to shout out to Tony Crutchfield. We'll see you tomorrow for another live BYUSN. Get it off my screen!